All right, so DJI did a thing again. Now, wireless transmission has been pretty common amongst different sets, big or small, because a lot of wireless transmitters are a lot more accessible now. Whether you're using a focus puller or you need a client just to get off of your shoulder, I've been using wireless transmission for a variety of different reasons. Now, a little while ago, I did do a video on one of the transmitter systems that DJI had made, but one of the biggest criticisms about it was, it was kind of expensive. And that brings in, well, this guy. This is the SDR transmission system by DJI. Now they did sponsor this video, they gave me a couple units of these and even an extra one so I can give it away at the end of the video. We'll talk about how to do that a little bit later, but well, you know, we'll get there. Now, because these are new, I'm gonna talk about a little bit of the build quality and design. One thing you're gonna notice about the SDR transmission system is that they're incredibly small. These are really tiny, like, that's, that's in the palm of my hand. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it lacks a lot of things in terms of your I.O. for a wireless transmitter. One of the things you're gonna have on there is the ability to charge via USB-C. Now, this can charge in the USB-C port in one of your batteries, or you can use something else instead, as well as you could use an MPF battery like you normally would other transmission systems. On top of that, you can directly connect this into an iPad or another iOS device, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the practical application, and as well as you have HDMI and SDI built into the unit. In terms of setup and the menus, it's actually really easy to do. The second I got these, I turned both of them on, turned on the link, and they connected and everything was good to go. So there isn't a big learning curve if you use wireless transmission in terms of using these guys. Now, when they first told me about the SDR transmission system, the first thing I wondered is why is there a standard definition SDR transmitter system? But that's actually not what it stands for. SDR from the DJI transmission system stands for software defined radio, and it has a couple different features that other transmitters didn't have until this point. One of the big things in SDR transmission is going to be a stable connection and also good penetration performance which actually is just a funny word to say but essentially the technology involved in the DJI transmission system it gives you a more stable connection and as well as you're working through different walls or different obstacles it'll still give you a really good signal in fact you're gonna be able to get 1080p at up to 60 frames a second and a 20 megabits bit rate which means that you're still gonna have high quality while using the transmitter and the receiver sometimes when you're using things like your iPad or your phone or even another camera monitor connected to a receiver you do get a loss of quality not only in the resolution but just the overall bit depth as well it looks a little bit choppy and it doesn't look exactly how it does on the monitor that you're using on your camera now the distance is rated for three kilometers in a line of sight but i also live in a city where i don't really have three kilometers of a line of sight so we are going to go into seeing how far i can actually get from my apartment down the street with a bunch of different houses power lines cars and other things that also use wireless connections that might give you some interference okay well that was kind of short-lived we only got about 200 meters away but i want you to keep in mind how far away and how many things we're actually shooting through now over here we're in a pretty big mall kind of plaza thing my camera is not in any of the buildings you immediately see it's actually behind this building on the left at the back of that building on the left so honestly if i'm on set and i'm pulling focus i'm probably not this far away and at the same time if i'm in video village i'm at least in the same building but we've managed to make it multiple buildings away it might not be 3,000 meters as it might suggest however this is as far as i think i would get if i wanted to have a monitored signal now we're just at that starting point we found it actually conked out but we're gonna keep walking and see how how far exactly away we are from the rental shop where my camera is. I actually don't know how else I'm going to keep talking onto here, but leave a comment down below how many anime characters you've identified so far. We are still walking to this rental shop. And that's how far it is till when we lost signal. Now it's not like some of the more expensive brands, but at the same time, it's a fraction of the cost and you can still pull focus just fine. In fact, when we were doing a video for Artless, which you guys could check out over here, we did have a Steadicam operator and we weren't using autofocusing lenses. I jumped on my DJI hand wheel and used a wireless transmission system and pulled focus using my monitor connected to the receiver and everything went just fine. I didn't find the latency to be too much and I was still able to pull focus while at the same time directing our Steadicam op in terms of the movements that I needed. Now, you could go to more expensive things, but you could also spend a lot more money to do those. So in terms of being able to pull focus in the majority of things, I think it actually works great. Now, one thing with these guys is that you can actually connect to an unlimited amount of receivers, including using Wi-Fi as well. Every other transmitter I've had has some sort of a limit in terms of how many receivers it can connect to, or if it wants to connect to Wi-Fi, there's a limit on different devices that you can do. Now, you can put this into broadcast mode, and that'll give you an unlimited number of things to connect to, and you actually don't have a latency drop or quality drop depending on how many things you've connected to. Now, I have about five devices in my house. I have an iPad, an iPhone, a couple monitors, and I have a ton of receivers. And we're gonna connect all of them to just this guy and see what the performance looks like. Okay, so Cam said that I'd have to use haze in my house, and I'm just hoping that the fire alarm doesn't go off. 
Now, the setup for the Wi-Fi connection is incredibly easy. There's gonna be a QR code when you swipe right on your transmitter. All you have to do is use a DJI app in your on phone or on iPad camera. It'll scan it and it'll join just like a regular Wi-Fi network. And then, well, these things are working and I can pull focus off things like my cell phone or, or on an iPad if I wanna use it as a monitor. Now, I wanted to show you guys how easy it is and how many things you could actually connect the DJI transmission system to. Now, I have four monitors here and there's one more in the house, but essentially what I wanted to do is show you that you could actually connect to Wi-Fi and on a receiver as well. Now, my iPad and my iPhone are gonna be connected via Wi-Fi. Now, with Wi-Fi connection, things may vary. Depends on your router connection. Also, if you're really close to other things that also have Wi-Fi, like my TV and my laptop, you might have some interruption. However, in a normal circumstance, you can still pull focus and actually use it as a monitor while using an iPad or an iPhone. Now, while you are watching this clip and watching my hand move back and forth, I just noticed something. When I look at the actual monitor, it's a lot faster than when I look at the playback from the clip. I think there might be a little bit of interference between going from the back of the camera through the core to the receiver, playing on this guy, then going back into the camera. Uh, results, again, they're still going to vary. This isn't necessarily a one millisecond system, but in terms of its 80 milliseconds that you do have, this is what you're working with. Is my office a little bit of a mess? Doesn't matter. But we actually have our third monitor right over here that's connected to a third receiver. Typically, you would only be able to get about two receivers and two iOS devices, but because you're in broadcast mode, it's unlimited. But I only have five monitors to hook this up to. So going into latency of the DJI transmission system, we are gonna be working with a 0.8 of a second or 80 milliseconds. Now, this is a little bit longer than the DJI professional version by about 10 milliseconds, which is negligible, I guess, between 10 milliseconds. I can't tell the difference. Now, in terms of that latency, you are gonna notice it a little bit more on the Wi-Fi than using the regular receiver. If you are looking for something with better latency, you might be looking at another brand, but you're also gonna look at a much larger price tag. Now, this is also transmitting over HDMI and not SDI, so do with that information as you will. However, this is what it looks like when we're comparing from my FX3 to some of the other ways that you can connect a wireless transmission signal. Now, in the first part of this video, I showed you guys the fact that you could USB connect in terms of charging on the transmitter or the receiver. But there's a second USB port as well, and that's actually to give you the ability to connect to an iOS device. Now, you can connect via USB-C to an iOS device, which still gives you that great latency and still gives you really great quality without having to worry about an HDMI or an SDI or adapters. The units themselves do come with a USB-C to an iPhone or an iPad and that way you can connect it and also when you have a battery on the receiver you can actually charge your phone too which is kind of nice because while using the DJI app and controlling your gimbal or controlling the camera or whatever the case might be it tends to draw a little bit of battery so this is actually really nice. And here's the thing it doesn't just stop there. The wireless transmitter actually gives you a Wi-Fi signal, so you can connect to a limited amount of devices that use a Wi-Fi connection. All you have to do is use a camera on your iPad or your iPhone, I'm not too sure if there's an Android app at the time of this video, and it'll be able to connect to the Wi-Fi signal that the transmitter gives, and then you can use a DJI app to not only use it as a monitoring feature, but you could actually control it as well. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet in this video is the fact that this wireless transmitter and receiver also is compatible with the RS system from DJI. Now, it's not gonna give you all the LiDAR bells and whistles that you might have on some of the professional kit, although there is gonna be a price savings. Now, the transmitter does come with a mount that you can mount onto your RS gimbal. It goes right in the bottom and it acts pretty much the same way RavenEye does. Not only can you connect via USB-C, but you could also connect via Wi-Fi connection as well. And using that DJI app again, not only do you have it as a viewing monitor, you'll be able to use use LUTs and focus peaking, your zebras and false color, but you're also gonna be able to use the different features on the gimbal like force motion control, adjusting settings on your pan tilt and roll head as well, and the virtual joystick. On top of that, if you're using a Sony camera, you could access the menus wirelessly while using your phone at the same time. I had to get a couple pickup shots with some of my friends before they went off into the Olympics, and we actually mounted this on the back of a car with a Tilta Hydra Alien using the SDR transmitter, and I was controlling everything from my phone in the front seat. I didn't have to use a monitor, I didn't need an SDI cable, I didn't need an HDMI cable, I just had the receiver unit hooked up to my phone on the phone mount, and I was able to use things like that force motion control, adjust my gimbal settings, and I could change the settings in my menu all for from my phone without having to worry about much. Okay, so my power is still out in the city, so we're just gonna finish this at the rental shop. Now, some of you guys might be wondering what is the difference between the SDR system by DJI and the original? I actually have both of them here. Uh, for one, one is gonna be a lot smaller than the other one. You could actually just physically, by looking at it, it kind of looks like a baby drone. The DJI original transmission system's a lot bigger, but the one key difference is two things. 
One, there's a 10 millisecond difference in the latency between the original and the new one. The original has about 70 milliseconds of latency where this guy has about 80. Can you tell 10 milliseconds apart from one or the other? If you can, great for you. I Generally, I can't. And if you're not pulling focus on fast moving objects, for the most part, I think you're gonna be fine. The other thing is going to be the LiDAR ecosystem. Now, I've done multiple videos on the LiDAR ecosystem with DJI before, but the SDR does not have the same compatibility. So if you're someone who has a high bright monitor, a Ronin 4D with the joysticks, and you're pulling off an RS4, doing all of that stuff with the LiDAR system, you might not get exactly what you're looking for. That's gonna be the difference in the price point between the SDR and the DJI original transmission system. Now, the price difference is a little bit staggering where the DJI system is around $2,000 and this is only about 500 bucks. But if that functionality is worth it to you, well, then the writing's on the wall. If it's not, well, then just save yourself a bunch of money. Now, in terms of the SDR transmission system, this is just kind of the baby version, not only in size, but in price as well. Now, if you're looking at getting both of these, you're looking at a price tag of 549, which is like a quarter of what it would cost to get just the wireless transmission receiver on its own without having all the bells and whistles like LiDAR compatibility. And if you only wanna get one of these guys, maybe you just wanna use one transmitter and Wi-Fi connect everything else, you're able to get this guy for 310 bucks. In terms of bang for buck in a transmission system, DJI doesn't miss. They have their professional kit where you're using it for bigger sets or you need more compatibility with other things. But for everything else and for some of those people that wanna use that system but at the same time don't have that money, you can get one of these guys and it still does the job. And it does it really well. That being said, a special shout out to DJI for sponsoring this video. I love these and I've been using them a ton, even more so than my bigger professional setups, especially for smaller crew stuff and when I don't need to use a LiDAR because, well, I have a Focus Pro and I kind of like using that instead. Now, I did say that I was gonna give away a transmitter and a receiver combo unit. Now, one of the things that you might have missed and one of the things you might have to watch back again is I gave you the names of six anime characters. You now have to go into the comment section and you have to list out which anime each of these characters are from. Have fun figuring that out, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.